Hi everyone, uh, TJ Mac Vintage Cards here, and I'm doing a set profile today of how I collect. Um, I told everybody in my opening video that I collect for football 18 key cards from each year from 1950 all the way till 1989. And I'm going to go through and profile some of these sets over the forthcoming uh, weeks just to give everybody a closer glimpse into my collection. And today I'm doing the 1958 top set. And as you can see, a very colorful tops issue that year. Um, there are some similarities to the 1959 tops baseball set. And I'll go through and show closer looks of each of the cards in a few minutes. But the grades I typically collect are between, for football, um, in the 1950s, between grades five and seven. Um, I've been a collector for about 20 years, so I've accumulated these cards over time. I know there's been a quite a, a price increase in a lot of the uh, cards as of late. But, I mean, to be honest with you, I enjoy looking at everybody's collections, no matter what the grades and things like that. Um, I'm, I'm not at all into the investor stuff where people talk about invest in this, invest in that. That's just not my thing. That's other things and I other people's things and I respect that, but that's not my thing. I'm just really into the passion for the collecting. Um, I buy graded because I, I like knowing that my cards are safely stored and I think they display great. And as I said in my opening video, um, if I can't display it, then I don't really want to have it in my collection. Fortunately, I have a room where I can display um, my cards throughout the year. I rotate them out, um, but it's very important to me that I have the opportunity to display what I have or why, why bother even having it for me in my view. So just taking a closer look at some of the cards. Here's uh, Bobby Lane, uh, PSA 6. Love that pink background. And uh, Bobby Lane is one of the great quarterbacks of the 1950s. Uh, played for Detroit here. That's where he really made himself a Hall of Famer and then later played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's all of Lenny Moore with the Colts. Great uh, Gino Marchetti. There's Yale Larry. As you can see in these sets, there's a lot more Hall of Famers than just 18 in these sets, but I try to, to mix it up and put some different guys in for each year so I can get a profile of some different players. Now, I always will have like the Unitas's and Bobby Lane's and, and guys like Chuck Bednarik. Because those guys are like superstar players of their time. But some of the lesser known Hall of Famers, I, I try to switch them out. And there's my Jim Brown rookie. Um, this one's an SGC. I, I buy PSA mostly, but I do have some SGC as well. Um, to me, SGC is a great value compared to PSA. I, I'm not involved in the registries. I can care less about the registries. So I'll buy uh, SGC if it presents nice. Um, and I like the card. It's going to go in my collection. So... That's what I did for this one, and I, I bought this one at a pretty good time before they got too out of hand. But um, I think it's a good example of a nice, nice Jim Brown. There's uh, Bart Starr. Was be just before they really hit the Green Bay Packers glory in the 1960s, um, they were, they were uh, newly coached by Lombardi at this time. I think he came in in 58, um, so they are still starting to get good. He's getting his players in place <clears throat> to make that great run of the 1960s. There's Frank Gifford, the classic uh, football pose there. Uh, not a Hall of Famer, Charlie Connerly, but uh, really good quarterback of the, of the 1950s. Um, probably can make a case for the Hall of Fame, but uh, hasn't been put in yet. There's a Y.A. Tittle and Leo Nomalini. I like these white backgrounds or white borders. And uh, as I said in my uh, one of my earlier videos, Sonny Jurgensen, one of the very underrated quarterbacks of the 1960s. This was his rookie card. Um, really made his name on the Redskins, not on the Eagles. Um, they traded him to the to the Redskins. I, I I think I heard that he was like quite the partier and kind of hard to manage. Uh, it doesn't really look that way when you see pictures of him, but I guess that's how he was. And he got shipped out of Philadelphia and went to to the Redskins when they were known as the Redskins. Then you got uh, Joe Perry, Joe the Jet Perry. Raymond Berry. There's the King, Hugh McElhenney. 
Holly Matson. No face guard in this picture. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know how safe it was to be playing that way, but it but it's a it's a cool look on a football card, very vintage looking. And then there was uh, at the time the ageless Joe Blanta in, in his uh, younger years. I wouldn't even say mid career here because this is 1958, and he started I believe in the late 40s, and he went all the way into the mid 70s. Played quarterback, and then later on he was a kicker um, uh, only towards the end of his career. Uh, that's what kept him in the league so long. But uh, but he had some really good years, especially in the AFL, and became a Hall of Famer. So I just, um, again, wanted just to profile this uh, this collection for everybody, just to kind of give you an idea of what some of the cards look like from that year and, and give you a, a glimpse into how I collect. But um, these, these are, are very fun to look at when you can see like a grouping of cards from the year and kind of see how they all look together. I like to lay them all out. In, in this manner. So that's it for today. I uh, appreciate this uh, short video um, and uh, thank you for those that view it and I'd appreciate it if you would uh, subscribe. Thanks everybody and I will talk to you soon.